So I've been following the Imani Khalif story since the beginning. For those who don't know, she was defamed by very wealthy people with large platforms. J.K. Rowling, Elon Musk, Logan Paul, Donald Trump as well. Um, it's been a while since the original story, so I do want to give you a bit of a refresher. This is courtesy of LGBTQ Nation. Khalif has been the victim of intense hate mobs directed at her slowly on the basis of transphobia and racism. It started when she defeated her opponent, Italian boxer An Angela Carini. Uh, is it Angela or Angela? I think it's Angela. I'm not really sure. Either way, uh, in the first round of boxing at the Olympics, Carini dropped out after being punched in the face and anti-trans bigots began to accuse Khalif of being either a trans woman or a cis man using an accusation made by an ally of Vladimir Putin uh, on Telegram earlier this year. So I do have a bunch of videos. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, um, you know, I've covered this, but I just want to give you a quick refresher. So Imani Khalif responded to the hate campaign that she received. Again, she had the swarm of hate come after her during one of the most important times in her life. She was at the Olympics, and all these people with millions and millions of followers collectively decided to dogpile on her and spread this lie that she is a cis man or a trans woman. And she still ended up winning the gold, which is incredible. It just really speaks to her, her perseverance, her character. I mean, if that happened to me, if there was this international hate campaign against me, I feel like I would be so rattled, I wouldn't be able to think about anything. It would throw me off my game, but she still won, so it really shows you how talented she is. Nonetheless, though, she is still a human being, and, you know, these lies about her being the subject of a global transvestigation campaign, it takes its toll, and this video really, it... It hit me, right? Because she is going to talk about this and she just breaks down into tears because what she went through is so traumatizing. It is going to probably follow her, unfortunately, for the rest of her life. But let me just play this for you and um, we'll react to it. Elon Musk a relayé sur X un message de la nageuse américaine Riley Gaines clamant que les hommes n'ont rien à faire dans les sports féminins quand quelqu'un d'aussi puissant que Elon Musk vous attaque. Qu'est-ce que ça déclenche comme harcèlement, en fait <laughs> so I'm going to pause it and I'm going to read it as well because uh, just in case somebody is listening, this guy's just ask, asking, you know, with this backlash, people like Elon Musk, Riley Gaines, you know, what does this backlash trigger? And she's going to respond. Elon Musk, and who Elon Musk was, was... Actually, let me turn down. Turn down a little bit. Elon Musk was one of the first to attack me during this hate campaign. He posted this video. And it was retweeted. So he was one of the first to have spread this buzz, this campaign against me. I would say, you hate me, but you don't even know me. I don't even know why you led this attack. You have been cruel to me. Cruel to my family, to my mother. At that time, my mother was going to hospital every day. Damn, she was dealing with so much. So I don't understand the behavior of people today. God is my guide. I am a practicing Muslim woman. As I said, I am a Muslim Arabic woman. And I got through this moment. I hope I will even uh, be stronger in the future and come back even more motivated. So, we didn't even know that she was dealing with this health issue with her mother, but she was. So, all of this was happening. And it was already hard enough, but these assholes just made it so much more worse. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. I don't know what's going to be the outcome of her harassment lawsuit, but I hope she takes every fucking penny she can from these pricks who slandered her. J.K. Rowling, Elon Musk. And I feel like this, if you weren't convinced before that transphobia hurts everyone, including cis women. I mean, obviously it disproportionately hurts trans people, but it hurts everyone. And this is proof of that. This is one of those issues where even if you don't care, you should care because it might come back on you as well. Anyone 
is susceptible to transvestigators online. I've done videos talking about how Andrew Tate was transvestigated because he posted a picture of himself or a video of himself wearing a Speedo and people were zooming in, looking at his junk, thinking that there wasn't anything there and they concluded that he was a trans man. On top of that, uh, we talked just a couple of weeks ago actually about how Dylan Mulvaney was reverse transvestigated. That's not my term. That's what they were calling it on Reddit because on Facebook, there are people that concluded that she was actually a cis woman and she was born female, then transitioned to male forcibly, and then transitioned back to female now. So she's back to her AFAB state and in their mind is a detransitioner. So this happens all the time. It's happened to children. I've talked about it on my channel. And, you know, they're, they're just anecdotes. It's not necessarily a widespread phenomenon, but it goes to show you that hate has widespread ramifications, societal implications. And it's deeply, deeply sad that so many people, mostly women, now have to worry if they are performing femininity sufficiently for others. You know, uh, well, you know, you uh, you don't have any makeup on today, so your face looks a little bit more masculine. Hmm. You didn't pluck your eyebrows, so hmm. Looking a little bit manly, you didn't shave your armpits or your legs. Hmm. I wonder. These are thoughts that shouldn't have to go through people's minds, but they are because there are people online now that are obsessed with trans people. This is what this is all about. It's about trans people. They hate Imani Khalif because they, they suspected that she's trans. She's not. It doesn't matter if she were a trans woman. She's not. But even if she were, that doesn't change the fact that she's a human being. It doesn't make her any less of a woman. It doesn't make her any less of a person. It doesn't make her any less of an athlete. So the fact that people are so hellbent on trying to find any little clue that might suggest that they're trans so then they could think, oh, they're evil. It's really sick. It's sick. And this is the product of, you know, uh, conservatism around the globe. Uh, I don't know necessarily where this started. I think that conservatives in America really got the ball rolling and then other countries picked it up. It might be the UK as well. But now this shit is very popular among conservatives in Canada. It's just, it's it's across the globe now. Everybody's being transvestigated. But here's the thing. They don't realize that this is one day going to blow up in their faces. Because when you demonize a community so much, what you do is you elevate them. And even though you're trying to portray them negatively and demonize them, nonetheless, there's a curiosity in people's heads that gets turned on and they think, maybe I want to know more. You also get people who are trans to think, huh, maybe I should come out. Maybe I should, you know, let people know that we're just like everybody else. We're no different. So this is like, this is what we saw with a lot of gay people, right? Harvey Milk encouraged people to come out. That's the only way you normalize it. And so this is in a roundabout way, inevitably going to lead to normalization. It's going to take a really long time and there's going to be a lot of fighting required, but this will blow up in their face. And all the people today who are talking shit and being overtly transphobic, it will come back and bite them in the ass in the same way that all their homophobic comments came back to bite them in the ass. Now, we're in a bit of a weird period because uh, it's cool to just straight up say the F slur again and to be openly Nazi, largely, you know, on Twitter, thanks to Elon Musk. But I mean, look, everything is uh, it, it's not going to be this way forever. I mean, maybe it will. Maybe it'll get worse. I don't know. But I, I genuinely am optimistic enough to believe that people are going to improve because at the end of the day, we're talking about human beings. And when we're talking about human beings, you can only demonize them for so long. You can only be ignorant for so long. But eventually, you're going to understand that uh, they're just like you. Maybe you'll get to know them. You'll have a friend or family member come out. You'll see them represented on TV. And this is probably overly optimistic because some people just die hateful bigots. Uh, and, and that's certainly a reality. But I think that most people aren't that too far gone. I don't want to believe that yet. Uh, maybe that's cope. Maybe I'm huffing too much hopium. But I do think that things are going to get better. And it's going to take a long time and it might get worse before it gets better. But I, I do genuinely believe that things will get better.